liquid in certain water. So these are the few important or useful ion exchanger uh, properties of the ion exchanger. Then we have classification. The classification of the ion exchanger. Uh, this is uh, uh, based on uh, its availability or its uh, synthesis. That is, if it is from natural, then it is natural ion exchanger. If it is uh, man-made, that is synthetic ion exchanger. And both natural and synthetic, in these both these groups, there are organic entities as well as inorganic entities. Okay. So let's have our natural ion exchanger. So most of the natural ion exchanger are aluminosilicates. Remember this word. Aluminosilicates means it contains both aluminum and silicon, SiO4 silicate. So uh, this is the natural ion inorganic ion exchanger. This is the inorganic ion exchanger. Uh, the best example is the geolites. Okay. So geolites, minerals like your uh, analcite, NaSiAlO6 twice, dot H2O, uh, chabazite, that is calcium, sodium, silicon, aluminum, 6 oxygen, twice, whole twice, 6 water. So, and uh, natural light, these are the natural ion exchangers. All these minerals have a relatively open three-dimensional framework-like structure with channels and interlocking system and with uh, interconnecting cavities in the aluminosilicate lattice. These geolites lattice consist of uh, SiO4, silicon tetroxide and aluminum tetroxide tetrahedra. And here what happened? The uh, aluminum O4 is very much unstable, but Al2O3 is stable. So that's why this is just a networking like structure or interconnecting uh, channel like structures so these have their oxygen atom in common and we have the structure that is in SiAlO6 then uh, there are other aluminosilicates with the uh, loose uh, layer structure having cation exchange property these material carry their counter ion in uh, between the layer of cations so the typical mineral of type uh, uh, Montmore low night with the approx approximate composition of these l 2 si 4 o 10 oh twice n water this is another category of your natural ion exchanger and also we have uh, the cut the anion exchanger like the exchange of oh minus cl minus sulfate phosphate these things gets exchanged uh, by the groups like your kaolinite, feldspar of soda light, and camerinite. So you have to remember these uh, uh, compounds for uh, uh, this part, that is ion exchange chromatography. Then we have uh, synthetic ion exchanger. Synthetic means this is man-made. So virtually the field of ion exchange has been dominated by organic ion exchange regime. So uh so the um, field of ion exchange generally it uh, signifies generally it signifies the organic uh, ion exchange resin an almost unlimited variety of resin with different composition and degree of cross-linking are prepared the resin consists of an elastic 3d network of hydrocarbon which carry fixed ionic groups the cation exchanger, the matrix carries ions like sulfide, uh, carboxylate, phosphide, and the anion like an anion exchanger, it carries groups like NS3, NH2, N. So these are the type of ions you know, which are present in, the, in our cation and ion exchanger. Then a liquid ion exchanger. So this is just um, a liquid. Uh, uh, the ion exchanger is in the liquid state having high molecular weight amines and quaternary ammonium salts these are pfs as a liquid anion exchanger they extract the ion and anionic uh, metal complexes with a similar analogy some authors classify 
alkyl uh, phosphoric acid, sulfonic acids, and carboxylic acid as liquid cation exchangers. So uh, the exchangers are natural exchanger, ion exchanger, synthetic exchanger, and liquid ion exchanger. Then we have synthesis of ion exchanger resin. So this is the how to prepare or how to synthesize the ion exchange resin. So let's we have our uh, this is working principle. Okay. So then my how to synthesize <clears throat> the main focus on synthesis and property of organic resin. If we take synthesis, there are too many resins and different chemical roots are there. Therefore, it may be difficult to cite here a few important ones. Hence, to highlight the synthetic chemistry of ion exchange resin, some discussions are monomeric organic electrolytes can be polymerized in such a way that a crosslink network is formed. That means we have to synthesize the resin in such a way that uh, uh, that a monomeric organic electrolyte will form a cross-linked or networking-like structure. This is uh, for your uh, synthesis of resin. Then we have the matrix can be built from non-ionic monomer and the fixed ionic groups are then introduced into the completed network. The matrix must be fixed or this may be non-ionic monomer and the fixed ionic group and then introduced into the completed network. The fixed ionic groups are introduced while the polymerization is still in progress. So these are the uh, things uh, which uh, must be must not be overlooked while synthesizing uh, the resin. So then we have a cation exchanger. So cation cation exchanger that is an exchange of the um, neg negative ions, so a broad variety of cation exchanger with fixed ionic group of different character and different acid strength are commercially available. The most common of these are strong acid resin with sulfite and weak acid resin with carboxylate group. Even if we consider these two type of resin, the resin of various strength can be made since dissociation constants are affected by the nature and configuration of the units to which the groups are attached. So uh, depending upon this factor, the cation exchanger may be of uh, various types, such as condensation polymers, where, where uh, uh, the two organic compound gets condensed with, uh, with, uh, mm, uh, with uh, a byproduct, and uh, the two compounds gets uh, Condense that is uh, connected uh, here. This is the phenol which undergoes uh, sulfonation with sulfuric acid H2SO4. What happened? The sulfonic acid group SO3H gets attached to this phenol. So now this, uh, this compound is known as benzene sulfonic acid. Okay, so this benzene sulfonic acid group will react with formaldehyde. That is HCHO. This is the formaldehyde. With one carbonyl group is also there. So if, uh, here, what happened? The two mol molecules of benzene sulfonic acid. Here, there is uh, in the uh, ortho position. Here, it is one hydrogen is present. Then we take another molecule of sulfonic acid, which also has one hydrogen here. So one hydrogen, one hydrogen, and this oxygen. It will remove water, H, H, and the oxygen from the formaldehyde. It will remove water. Then we have the linkage with the help of CH2. So that's why this uh, benzene sulfonic acid bind with the second benzene sulfonic acid through this methylene group, CH2 group. Okay. So this is uh, this bond is formed by the liberation of water molecule. That is two hydrogen from the two benzene sulfonic acid ortho position and the oxygen from the formaldehyde. So by this uh, method of condensation or condensation polymerization, we will uh, prepare or synthesize uh, this uh, mm, uh, this uh, 
network or uh, cross uh, linked type molecule these are bigger molecules then addition polymerization where addition occur let us we have uh, two examples that is styrene the benzene containing ch double bond ch2 and one divinyl benzene that is ch ch double bond ch2 and at the para position we have ch double bond ch2 so if it is uh, at one position this is styrene if it is at para position to each other this is divinyl benzene so if we uh, add these two compounds then what happen there will be <coughs> addition or in addition what happen this uh, uh, styrene benzene ring will be this will be the um, uh, continue chain that is ch2 ch this will be continue then there will be a linkage between the between through methylene group this is the methylene group ch2 this will attack here and this will be um, uh, this will be just this double bond will attack here and this double bond will break that means this will be um, the divinyl benzene link with this and the same thing happen that is ch to ch and at the para position here also here also what happened at the para position the same thing happen and we have a copolymer which on uh, acidification with s2so4 will give sulfonic acid so3h it will be uh, here one is so3h here one is so3h and here one is so3h so there will be three so3 is will um, will be attached to this uh, big molecule and we have a addition polymerization okay so addition polymerization we have uh, two things that is styrene and divinyl benzene uh, so after uh, sulfonation with s2so4 we have this compound then ion ex ion exchanger anion exchanger so the earliest anion exchanger synthesized were with weak base amino acids so this is the anion exchanger ns3 plus nh2 plus so this 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 will be the quaternary salt n plus with four um, alkali groups is the quaternary salt this is your tertiary salt that is uh, ch3 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 n plus this is tertiary because nitrogen is linked to two alkyl groups uh, sorry three alkyl groups means it is tertiary and if it is four it is quaternary okay so it was followed by synthesis of resin with strong base quaternary phosphonium uh, groups and tertiary sulfonium group and here also this is phosphonium that is p plus the tertiary phosphonium and this is sulfonium that is uh, uh, sorry this is quaternary but this is tertiary then we have condensation polymerization in uh, anion exchange where positive ions are there so this is just a derivative of uh, amine uh, so this compound is uh, a meta amino aniline meta amino aniline or uh, it, it can be meta phenylidine diamine if we, we treated this compound with formaldehyde h2co then what happen this h2 of nitrogen okay and and the oxygen from your formaldehyde will liberate water and we will have this compound okay they this compound so the aldehyde react with amino group in this process the secondary and tertiary groups are formed thus the resin are polyfunctional aliphatic polyenes uh, polyamines which are not as weakly basic can also be condensed with aldehyde so here we we uh, we can able to synthesize different uh, uh, different type of amines like uh, this nitrogen is your secondary amine this is your secondary amine this is your secondary amine this is your primary amine so like this we can able uh, by through this condensation polymerization where uh, we can uh, prepare or synthesize this type of ion exchangers then the same thing addition polymerization 
we have uh, this type of polymerization can be possible with uh, styrene and divinyl benzene and where the sulfonic acids are replaced by your ch2 n me3 plus cl that is a quaternary ammonium group so in your uh, cation exchange it is so3h in anion exchange it is ch2 n me3 plus cl and there is another type that is amphoteric exchanger which can um, exchange both acidic and basic group or cation and anionic group uh, present in the sample a number of exchanger of this type are synthesized a well-known resin containing both strong base and acid group is prepared by co of styrene with vinyl chloride vinyl chloride is ch2 chcl this is vinyl chloride and a cross linking agent followed by quaternization and sulfonation of the product so just uh, this is uh, the reaction where styrene reacts with vinyl chloride to produce this ad addition product which uh, subsequently treated with uh, the uh, trimethyl amine to give uh, this one followed by sulfonation will give this sulfonic acid so this is undergoes your amphoteric ion exchanger where both positive and the negative part are there which can acts as both uh, acts on both acidic or basic part of your uh, sample that is both on cation and anionic part of your sample so this is amphoteric exchanger then the commercial trade names and nomenclature uh, different ion exchange regions are available in market with different trade names and uh, depending upon its manufacture and trade names this will have different compositions and different grades that is a dow chemical company usa so this is dow x rome and has company in usa amber amber light then followed by geocrab deolite this is germany made uh Lewellite. Ulfatit, Ceralite, this is, this is from India, Ceralite, the company is Cisco. So what are the nomenclature? Uh, in Dow X, the first one, Dow Chemical, in Dow X 50, in Dow X 50, 50W, that is cation exchanger, Dow X 124-21K anion exchanger. So X number or percentage divinyl benzene like X8. So X stands for your number or percentage. Mesh size is 20 to 50. This is a mesh size, 20 to 50. And ionic form that is Na. Here it is K, that means it is potassium. And uh, if it is sodium, this is also ionic form it is written. So this is the... Uh, things or specification written here then what are the resin properties what are the property required for a good resin to be used in a ion exchange chromatography the resin uh, as a matter of uh, fact the resin is very complex material and there are several properties which are to be known and clearly understood before putting it into the uh, particular application then we have first one will be the uh, moisture content it is very much important thing that is the presence of moisture or water may interfere mm, the separation technique or in our ion exchange chromatography the particle size another important factor of the resin that's the cross linkage capacity distribution coefficient equivalency ex exchange then we have a resin selectivity and then let's have moisture content so uh, uh, we have to heating we have to heat the resin at 110 to 115 degree centigrade overnight to have a constant weight and to evaporate all the moisture that it contains however several precautionary steps should be uh, should be exercised so these things are very much common 
that before using of any resin for an ion exchange chromatography, we should uh, place it in, a, in an oven of around 110 to 120 degrees centigrade for overnight to make it moisture free. Then particle size, the important particle size, the proper column uh, performance is ion exchange unit is obvious. Rate of exchange depends upon the particle size. The resin beads or particle may be formed diameter up to 1 millimeter to less than 0.04 millimeter. So particle size is an another important uh, factor that uh, that uh, affects the process of uh, separation in ion exchange chromatography. Particle size is very much important. Then we have uh, uh, cross linkage. Uh, the second variation which can be introduced in the copolymer bead is that of cross linking the styrene uh, divinyl benzene polymer refer to the fraction of divinyl benzene contained the resin con uh, having eight percent cross linking uh, is made with bead containing eight percent divinyl benzene and two percent styrene and other monovinyl monomer so these are the uh, composition or the ratio uh, taken to uh, synthesize a particular percentage of cross linkage resin for a uh, for the separation of different components in a mixture then we have pro after cross linking it is the capacity the ion exchange uh, capacity that means it can be taken as a reservoir of exchangeable ion in the ion exchange operation it is a counter ion which are put to use the counter counter ion content of a given amount of material is equal to the fixed charge which must be balanced by the counter ion the neutrality must be maintained so then uh, uh, it is a quantitative manner by its capacity and uh, in the common use uh, the capacity is different determined as defined as the number of ion equivalent in a specified amount of the material which can be exchanged by the resin it is a capacity so capacity and and uh, related data are primarily used for two purposes for characterizing ion exchange material and for using numerical calculations therefore total capacity of an ion exchange resin is the total of ionic sites per unit weight or volume of the resin the dry weight of the total capacity is usually expressed in milli equivalent per gram of anhydrous resin so this is the total capacity of a resin okay so this is uh, number of ionic sites per unit weight or volume of the resin this is the capacity the operating capacity useful capacity breakthrough dynamic capacity these are uh, just the uh, basic things uh, you may read okay then distribution ratio this is the concentration of the ion in the resin divided by concentration of the same ion in the solution that means uh, <clears throat> the concentration of the uh, of a particular ion in the sample that is the solution and the concentration of the ion present in the resin the same ion in the resin this is known as the distribution ratio so it is amount per kg of dried resin divided by amount per liter of the solution if i play uh, put a graph then concentration of ion in solution uh, versus concentration of ion in resin and I, I, I will have this type of uh, plot where this is known as distribution isotherm because here the uh, mm, uh, temperature remains constant just to wait towards
okay so next we have uh, this is a distribution ratio which is uh, followed by your uh, distribution coefficient that is kd it is a synonymous to distribution ratio that is concentration in one gram of resin divided by concentration in one milliliter of the solution this is very much same as your distribution ratio and uh, here it is the amount and here it is the concentration so both the things are related to each other then equivalency of exchange it is well known that in the process an equivalency of ion exchange is established it uh, the amount uh, to the fact that as many ions equivalent to one charge must enter the resin phase as leave it during a reaction process then we have uh, a resin selectivity resin selectivity means uh, it if, um, and selection of resin for a particular ion exchange chromatography is um, an important uh, step towards separation and um, the strong cation exchanger like divex 50 is comparable in acidic strength with hydrochloric acid and will form stable salt like bond with cation <coughs> similarly a strong anion exchanger like divex 1 is comparable to sodium hydroxide and will form stable bond with any anion so davex 50 is your cation exchanger which can uh, uh, which can comparable with any acid strength and hydrochloric acid and it will form salt like uh, bond but davex 1 is your anion exchanger so this is for your uh, selectivity coefficient that is k uh, a b this is equal to concentration of A in the resin into concentration of B in solution divided by concentration of B in resin into concentration of A in solution. This is just the um, cross-linking that is uh, A in resin divided by B in resin that is B in solution divided by A in solution. So this may be written as this that is the concentration of A in resin R stands for resin b in solution concentration of a in solution b in resin so this will be the uh, resin selectivity so type of functional group this will be the anion exchanger where there will be uh, tertiary or quaternary as uh, nitrogens are there this is anion exchanger then valency and the nature of exchanging ion this depends uh, when the uh, oxidation number or the charge on a particular ion on a particular atom or ion or metal is uh, high then we will uh, predict this will have um, more uh, uh, this is more towards ion exchanging separation then this is followed by if it if the charges are same this depends on the uh, under similar condition and constant valency for univalent ion, the extent of exchange decreases with size of the hydrated ion. So, size of the hydrated ion, uh, the um, exchange extent of exchange decreases as the size increases. So, the, uh, uh, this is the size increases that is the um, hydrated cation. Okay, smaller is the um, ion means this is highly hydrated and this is leastly hydrated. So, that's why. Uh, in the uh, case of divalent ion, the ion size is an important factor. This is the ion size of the divalent ion, where the ion size is uh, less, that is barium. Uh, incomplete dissociation of salt play an important role. So this will be the highest and cadmium, that is the um, uh, bigger size, will be the least prone towards ion exchange. With strong basic anion, this will be the um, uh, this will be the order that will um, that is in uh, Dowex one and twenty one uh, Kelvin temperature in uh, univalent anion FA two behave similar to univalent cation. So nature of non exchanging ions after getting an uh, idea about exchanging ions. Let the consider the nature of exchanging ions that is ferric ion concentrated solution in chloride it will form a anion that is fcl4 minus iron tetrachloride 
ion which will be held strongly by quaternary ammonium ion. Then we have ion form of ionic form of resin followed by a total solution ionic strength. This is just the concentration factors are there. This is uh, sodium plus present in resin, hydrogen present in uh, acid divided by sodium and hydrogen in the resin and solution. Then these are the terminologies. Then we have the equations like this that is uh, equivalent fraction of uh, sodium in resin divided by 1 minus equivalent fraction of sodium in resin equal to uh, K H plus Na plus that is the that is the distribution coefficient X Na plus and um, by 1 minus X Na plus. So these are the equations of your resin capacity. Then we have uh, operating method. Uh, let's move to this one working principle we have four types of working principles that is equilibration sample application and wash followed by illusion and regeneration the four types of working principles are there again that is equilibration then we have a sample application and uh, wash followed by illusion then regeneration now this is equilibration where number of positive ion gets equilibrium with uh, the same number of anion uh, that is negative ions the first step is the equilibration of the stationary phase to the desired start condition when equilibrium is reached that is the number of cation and anion both becomes uh, the same all stationary phase change charge groups are associated with exchangeable counter ions such as chloride or sodium as shown by the blue counter ion and red stationary phase charge groups ions so this is your uh, stationary phase charge ions that is static phase and this is the mobile phase that is minus ion so the extra but this minus ions will be the counter ions then <clears throat> sample application and wash the second step is sample application and wash so we have to wash the uh, sample uh, the goal uh, in this step is to bind the target molecule and wash out all unbounded material the sample buffer should have the same pH and ionic strength at the starting buffer in order to bind all appropriately charged protein. So here what happened? The bounded anions gets washed with uh, um, with uh, which bind uh, the target molecule and wash out all the un unbounded materials. This un unbounded material gets washed. Then illusion. In the third step, illusion biomolecules are released from the ion exchanger uh, by a change in the buffer composition. So, by changing the buffer con uh, combination, so what is a buffer? Buffer is a solution which pH uh, the pH doesn't change uh, by addition of uh, little amount of acid, alkali, or uh, water to it. So that is known as pH. That is the uh, that is known as buffer solution. If in a buffer solution, the pH remains constant after addition of acid base or water to it. So by changing the buffer composition, we may elute, uh, we may apply the illusion step. A common way is to increase the ionic strength with sodium chloride or another simple salt in order to dissolve. Dissolve means to detach these positive ions from the surface this is known as desorption the bound protein proteins are deserved relative to the number of charge groups on their surface so this depends upon the desorption depends upon the number of charge group on this surface so then uh, these are the peaks uh, we uh, um, we have in uh, different uh, amino acids 
that is this is aspartic acid this detector signal versus time aspartic acid signal and this is the 309 serine glutamic acid proline glycine alanine cysteine valine etc then what are the requirements that is column packing the column application of the sample the column is made up of glass stainless steel or polymers in the packing the column the packing substances will be uh, there will be weight packing method a slurry is prepared of the eluent uh, just same like your tlc with the stationary face powder and then carrying poured into the column care must be taken and what is the application is how to apply the sample after packing the sample is added to top of added to the top of the stationary phase using syringe or micro pipette this layer is usually topped with a small layer of sand or with cotton or glass wool to protect the shape of the organic layer from the velocity of newly added so these are the mobile phases that is uh, the solvents we use on the uh, basis of the sample that is acid alkali or copper solution the stationary phase the anion compound consisting of cation and anion, uh, sorry, anion, uh, anionic species B minus, the stationary phase, and illusion components of mixture separate and move down the column at different rates depending upon the affinity of ion for ion excess. So, illusion depends on the affinity of the ion uh, between the component of the mixture and the column um, uh, which move down the column. The inlets are collected at different stages. Analysis of the inlet, the spectroscopy method, flash photometry, polarography, conductivity. So just see this one. This is just an example of your laboratory ion exchange chromatography, where we use a column. Okay, this is just a column, and uh, the resin is uh, very much packed here. The resin is packed, and at the top we uh, uh, add the sample here and the buffer uh, that is a mobile page is um, allowed to pass through this resin then uh, the different particle size the different particle size plays an important role in in this separation the smallest particle will be bound by, to the resin and the uh, larger size particle will be separate first. So here what happened, the larger size particle separate first, followed by the medium size or smaller size particles. How, why the smaller size particles gets entrapped by, with the resin holes. So that's why they are, these are uh, separated at the end. So here the red color, these are the uh, larger size particle these are separated first and the this one the uh, navy blue uh, components these are the medium size or the blue these are the smallest or the smaller size particles which gets separated at the end we have also um, something like that this is ion exchange column with fraction collector then we have uh, Okay, so then ion exchange resin, oh, these are also um, uh, already discussed, ion exchange resin, the, um, uh, what are the nature, this is very much valency of ions, size of ion, polarizability, concentration, concentration and charges, pH of the mobile phase, and mixing mobile phase, temperature, buffer, these are all the parameters or factors which uh, uh, affecting the ion exchange separation. So these are the three type of ion exchangers already discussed. This is already discussed, natural synthetic and organic resin. These are some examples. This is the cellulose structure, exchange medium, maybe cation exchanger or an anion exchanger. If this is anion exchanger, then anion will be exchanged. Uh, this will this may be tertiary amine which are very much uh, um, attracted uh, or uh, are very much prone towards the negative part that's why this is anion exchanger just remember 
the uh, negative part for negative ions or anions the anion exchange rate is in n plus sodium plus and for positive part it is so3h that is sulfonic acid then just see this one for uh, cation exchanger this is so3 minus this is the strong cation exchanger now these are some examples which they are uh, with their common name this is tam trimethyl amino ethyl that is uh, triethyl amino ethyl tbta so these are the different exchangers what are the advantages this is uh, cost effective reusable easily collectable low maintenance cost efficient technique and this is also quick separation the application as already told on that is softening of hot water demineralization of water to analyze base composition of nucleic acid to concentrate the metal ion in the sample to measure the additive in food and drug samples to separate protein mixtures for extraction of enzymes from tissues purification of solution from ionic impurities then it is followed by separation of inorganic ions separation of sugar amino acid and proteins then at the end it is for your hplc high performance liquid chromatography so thank you uh, this is the first part of our uh, discussion we already discussed these things we have specific cation these are just uh, examples then we have synthetic inorganic resins in this part only you have to um, remember the type of resins the mechanism the application and the uh, anion exchanger and cation exchange only these things then these are all examples synthetic aluminosilicates miscellaneous inorganic exchanger special property and application these things and these are the applications how separation of metals occurs how separation of organic occurs separation of ionized from non ionized separation of actinide elements by ion exchange chromatography then we have miscellaneous application then this will be the end of this unit so um in the next part we will have the next uh, unit that is the size exclusion chromatography this is another important uh, chromatographic method which is widely used that depends on the uh, particle size of the sample okay so here also uh, in ion exchange there is uh, application of resin but in size exclusion there is application of gel this gel so in this part we will discuss what is the basic principle involved what are the properties and uh, of gel and how we can classify and synthesize the gels uh, what are the utilities unique features and that will be the under at the end we have the some applications so uh, again we have uh, we will have a uh, 5 minute break so at exactly 6:38 uh, we will uh, discuss this uh, size exclusion chromatography this one so um, let's have some uh, water or refreshment then we will uh, exactly meet at 6:38 so till then uh, uh, let's have us the break okay thank you
Uh, so welcome back students uh, my voice is audible okay thank yes, you sir. Uh, yes so, sir uh, i am just sharing my uh, ppt presentation of your size exclusion chromatography this is a unit 10 of your block 4 okay so size exclusion chromatography <clears throat> uh, this chromatography in this chromatography the separation is achieved on the basis of molecular geometry or molecular dimension that is the or in uh, general term it is a particle size the size exclusion uh, chromatography is otherwise known as gel filtration chromatography because here we are adding uh, we are uh, using gel as the stationary phase uh, then <clears throat> um, if we probe into another criteria of classification based on equilibrium and rate process 
Uh, the exclusion chromatography technique appears in chromatographic process where liquid and solid are in equilibrium. Thus, very rightly, uh, the size exclusion chromatography, chromatography is one of the important form of liquid chromatography technique because gel is a form of liquid. That's why it is just like your solid liquid equilibrium is there. And uh, this is uh, just an extent or uh, advancement of your liquid chromatography technique. Then these are the contents we have the introduction followed by principal material instrumentation advantages disadvantages then application of gel electrophoresis size exclusion chromatography the intro, uh, this is the introduction part this is the scc that is size exclusion chromatography other uh, in uh, also called uh, gel filtration or gel permeation chromatography gpc which uses porous particle to separate molecules of different sizes this is porous particles these are uh, this will be very minute particles or uh, this this will be imbibed uh, in the holes of the gel on the basis of their uh, particle size the, the smaller particles which uh, will uh, um, entrapped in the gel and the larger particle will separate fast. So this uh, is basically based on the size of the particle or its molecular geometry or molecular structure of the sample. It is generally used to separate <coughs> biological molecules and to determine molecular weight and molecular weight distribution of polymers. So this is, these have a wide application in biological field. It is usually applied to large molecules or micromolecules complexes such as protein and uh, industrial polymers. <clears throat> then when an aqueous solution is used to transport the sample through the column, the technique is known as gel filtration chromatography. When an water or aqueous sample is used, then uh, the sample through the column, this technique is known as gel filtration. When an organic solvent is used, it is known as gel permeation. So two types of uh, uh, classification. Again, we have that is in if the mobile phase is aqueous solution, then it is gel filtration. If it is organic solvent used as the mobile phase, this is gel permeation. That is GPC. This is GFC. The separation of the molecule is called fractionation. Uh, size fractionation means fractionally on the basis of their size, particle size, the uh, constituents are separated. And here the larger particles are separated first, followed by medium size and smaller size particles. The size of pores in beads determine the exclusion limit, what goes through the bead and what goes around the bead. So these beads are just like gels. We have a uh, a small kids are eating gels or we have a uh, small gel balls are available which uh, if we put these uh, small small balls in water this will swell up and uh, this will form uh, a gel gel uh, like uh, substance so these are the gels that is an equilibrium between uh, solid and liquid and these are just like beads so what happened in these beads uh, depending upon the size of the particle the smaller particles gets uh, entrapped in the bead and the larger particle which doesn't pass through these beads are just separated uh, first. What is the principle? A mixture of molecule dissolved in liquid that is a mobile phase is applied to a chromatography column which contains a solid support in the form of microscopic spheres or beads that is a gels. Uh, the mass of bead within the column is often referred to as a column bed. The beads act as traps or sieves and function to filter small molecules which become temporarily trapped within the pores. That means in the gel, the uh, pores are uh, there. In the pores, uh, the, small, the smallest particle or the smaller particle of the sample gets uh, trapped or sieves and this will be separated at the end we will have also some uh, figures are also after this slide larger molecule pass around or are excluded from the beads because larger molecules are not able to 
entrapped or trap in the uh, bead large sample molecules cannot or can only partially penetrate the pores whereas smaller molecule can access most of all pores thus large molecules elude first that means it is separated first smaller molecule elude later while molecules that can be access all the pores elude last from the column so the molecules the smallest smaller molecules which are access all the pores will be separated at the end particles of different sizes will elute or filter through a stationary phase at different rates just see this picture what happened now these are the gels which uh, which gets packed in this column and we will put the uh, sample here at the top of this column then what happened <coughs> the smaller particles the smaller particles get entrapped or trapped within the gel just see this one this is the enlargement of this section in this section what happened the smaller particles gets entrapped and the larger particles just goes outside these gels and they will move through these voids or intermolecular space or in interspaces and they will on the basis of their uh, large size they will move fast at the bottom and they will separate it fast this is size exclusion uh, chromatography that means the smaller particles will entrap in the gels and they will separate it at the end followed by the medium size particle and the larger size particle they will not entrap by the gel so that's why they will separated at the first here uh, this is just a uh, burette like structure here just this is a column which is uh, packed by the gels and we have uh, this solution on the or the sample uh, added at the mouth of this uh, column then we have the small particles the pink color are the small small size particles these particles are entrapped in the gel followed by the medium size particle and the large particle will not enter and this will separate it first so here it is written here it is written very small molecules enter many pores in the gel equilibrating between the gel and the moving buffer and so travel slowly and are eluted later medium size molecules enter small some pores in the gel equilibrating between the gel and the removing buffer then large size enter few pores in the gel and so travel rapidly and are eluted sooner so this is the principle that on the basis of their size they will trap or entrap in the gel and they will uh, separate it according to their particle size or size uh, or their particle dimension then we have some mathematical uh, uh, terminologies here total column volume will be vg vi vo where vg is volume occupied by the packing total packing vi is the volume of the solvent in the pores vo is the free solvent volume similar to injection volume so this is all about your total volume of the column that is vt equal to vg vi plus vo what are the components of size exclusion chromatography we have stationary phase mobile phase column pump and detector so what are the stationary phase used stationary phase are generally semi permeable porous beads with well defined range of pore sizes beads are cross linked polymers degree of cross linking is controlled carefully to yield different pore sizes smaller pore sizes are used for rapid desalting of protein or for protein purification that is smaller pore sizes are generally used intermediate pore sizes are used to separate relatively small proteins so this is just reverse or opposite that is smaller are used to desalting protein of higher uh, uh, big size proteins and uh, intermediate pore sizes are used for smaller proteins so very large size 
are used for purification of biological complexes. So stationary phase used for gel exclusion chromatography. Uh, its a trade name is dextran, that is cephadex, that is polyacrylamide and dextran polyacrylamide cephacryl TM, trademark. Each is available with a variety of different ranges of pores, uh, size in the bead, permitting separation of macromolecules of different sizes. And uh, a good stationary phase should have, it is chemically inert, this is economic, not react with the component, not react with the elute, should be colorless, uniform in size and shape, and should be mechanically stable. So these are the things uh, uh, we are, uh, for a good stationary phase, we have, uh, depending upon the uh, rigidity, softness, we have uh, three types, that is soft gel, semi-rigid, and high, highly rigid. Soft gel, we have dextran, polyacryl gel, semi-rigid, we have biobeads, separation non-polar, polymer in polar, non-polar solvents, and high rigid, these are gels and glasses separation of polar system so we have for polar system highly rigid for non-polar solvent we have semi-rigid and for separation protein we have soft gels so this is an example of your stationary phase that is dextran a homopolysaccharide of glucose residue it is prepared with various degree of cross linking to control pore size it is bought as a dry bead the beads swell when water is added it is obvious that uh, when uh, water is added, it will be swell up. The trade name is Fadex. It is mainly used for separation of small uh, peptide, uh, peptides and globular protein with small to average molecular masses. Then we have <coughs> separation range. This is Cephatex G10. We have 100 to 800 DA. This is G15. We have 500 to 1500 DA. So the, this will be the separation ranges and this will be the uh, reservoir containing the element this is the column okay then for uh, another type that is polyacrylamide so these gels are prepared by linking acrylamide with nn methylene b acrylamide the pore size determine the cross linking the separation property of the polyacrylamide gels are mainly the same as those of dextran they are sold as bio gel p this is a trade name they are available in a wide range of pore sizes. Then again, agarose, linear polymer of uh, D galactose and uh, 3, 6 anhydro 1 galactose. This is agarose. It forms a gel that is held together with hydrogen bonds. It is dissolved in boiling water and forms a gel when it is cold. The concentration of the material in the gel determines the pore size. The pore of agarose gel are much larger than those of cephadex or biogel P. It is useful for analysis of separation of larger globular protein or long linear molecules such as DNA. So for the separation of a DNA, we, we may use the agro agarose as the static phase. Then we have the mobile phase. It is the solvent. And it is uh, main, uh, generally the buffer is used as the mobile phase. The liquid used to dissolve the biomolecule to make the mobile phase usually called a buffer. So just remember a buffer solution is a solution which pH doesn't change with addition of small amount of acid, water or base to it. The mixture of biomolecule dissolved in the buffer is called sample. So here we, uh, we take the example of biomolecules and this biomolecule dissolve in this buffer and it makes the sample. That is mobile phase with biomolecule is the sample. The choice of mobile phase to be used in any separation will depends on the type of separation to be achieved and component to be separated. The most common element in for polymers that dissolve at room temperature, that is uh, uh, what are the elements or solvents generally used, that is THF, tetrahydrofuran, chloroform or dimethyl formaldehyde. So these are the solvents used as mobile phase uh, for uh, common uh, polymers. 
then we have mobile phase material and solvent for synthetic polymer we have toluene for polystyrene polyvinyl chloride styrene butadiene rubber epoxy resin we have thf tetrahydrofuran polyolefins we have trichlorobenzene polyurethane dimethylformamide protein and polysaccharides we have water and buffer so depending upon your know, type of material to be separated uh, we have to use uh, we have to select uh, the mobile phase accordingly then the solvent selection the solvent used for mobile phase of uh, size exclusion chromatography is limited to uh, the following criteria the solvent must dissolve the solid sample completely this is the um, uh, most important part of selecting any solvent for a particular uh, chromatographic method that the solvent should dissolve the sample completely the solvent has different properties with solute in the eluent typically with solvent refractive index ri solvent must not degrade the sample during use otherwise the viscosity of the eluent will gradually increase over times so this must be must not degrade the sample the solvent is not corrosive to any of the component uh, this is another uh, factor that is uh, how we can prepare the mobile phase the the high purity of the solvent is recommended uh, uh, first filter the mobile phase solvent using 0.5 micron filter paper i uh, remove the particulate impurity present uh, maybe in the form of dust or insoluble salt antioxidant is added uh, to trichlorobenzene to keep solvent stable in at high temperature other additives uh, eliminate absorption or interaction with the solute solute with column packaging material of size exclusion chromatography so uh, just uh, uh, these are the basic steps that before uh, using a particular solvent as a mobile phase we have to filter the mobile phase with the uh, semi micron filter paper to separate the uh, impurities uh, like dust and insoluble salts then may make it antioxidant by adding these things uh, that means the dissolved oxygen will be removed and uh, or it may be um, uh, removed at high high temperature also so these are the things so the sample solution are supposed to be prepared in dilute concentration that is 2 mg per ml uh, a good solvent can dissolve a sample in any proportion in a range of temperature sample with broad molecular weight higher molecular weight distribution may require higher concentration it is recommended to filter recommended to filter the sample solution before injecting into column so always before the injection the sample should be uh, made solution with the mobile phase in order to get the rid of clogging or excessive high pressure problem agitation and filtration generally filtration is required to remove insoluble impurities do not agitate and filter sample that contain very high molecular weight greater than 1 milli commercially available column these are commercially available analytical column 7.5 to 8 mm of diameter preparative column 25 to 25 mm usually column uh, common column length it is 25 to 30 50 or 60 centimeter recently narrow core columns are available shorter column save time and solvent if the length of the column is shorter then we, we will save the time and also the solvent small particles with uh, around 5 mm of dimension provide a better resolution on the other hand 5 mm or even 3 mm packing are more sensitive towards contamination by sample containing impurities so these things also um, with higher priority that uh, very small uh, uh, packaging also not good because this will be contaminated by the impurities present in the sample particles as large as 20 mm have been recommended for high molecular weight polymers so small particle size packing can sometimes result in shear degradation the pressure degradation of large polymer uh, molecules because the space between particle is very narrow 
column with different porosity or mixed bed column provide a better separation. So these are the handling of uh, SCC column. A column set in SCC should be always run in the same mobile page. That the isocratic SCC column should never be operated in back backward direction. So never be it is backward. This is also always top to bottom. So care should be taken in connecting column and injection, sample injection. Replacing a clock inlet fit is a dangerous operation which can reduce column performance. So no clock inlet should be fixed. A damaged or uh, dirty check valve or pump it should be it should not be overlooked. So this is uh, an example or a schematic uh, presentation of your SCC where this is the solvent, this is the column and uh, this is a detector which is detect. These are the interfaces. This is the uh, digital uh, data station. And this is the injection valve where sample is injected. And uh, this is the pump here. So this is the advanced version of your uh, size exclusion chromatography. Then we have what is this? P pump. So this is pump. So this pump is constant flow. This is very important. Uh, the flow rate should be 0.1% with an error error in molecular mass up to 10%. Most pumps are reproduced. I will share this uh, PPTs, okay? Just uh, try to read out these things once and try to remember the basic data is only for your theoretical examination. Detector, the concentration sensitive detector, bulk uh, property detector that is refractive index detector, solute property detector or UV, then evaporative detector that is evaporative light scatter detector ELST. Then these are the type of detector which are used in SCC. Molar mass sensitive detector, light scatter detector, low angle light scattering detector LLS, then a multi angle light scattering detector MLS. Then viscosity detector of different uh, viscometers, others will be uh, flame uh, ionization detector, then mass spectrometer with FTIR also. These are coupled with this size exclusion chromatography. And these are the advantages, short time, well-defined separation on the basis of this dimension, narrow band and good sensitivity, there it will be no sample loss and a small amount of mobile page required if the column's uh, length is short the flow rate can be set with adjusting the pump what are the disadvantages limited number of peaks that can be resolved within the short time scale of the gpc run that is gel permeation chromatography run uh, filtration must be performed before using the instrument to prevent dust and other particulates from uh, running uh, running the column and entertain with the detector this is very much important if the impurity is present in the sample or any particulate matter is there it must be uh, uh, filtered before uh, the injection the molecular masses of the most of the chain will be too close for the gpc separation to show anything more than broad peaks here are the applications protein fractionation purification molecular weight determination separation of sugar protein peptide rubber and other met, uh, other on the basis of their sizes technique can be determined the quaternary structure of the purified protein this is also widely used technique for the purification and analysis of synthetic and biological polymers such as protein, polysaccharides, and nucleic acid. Various species of RNA and viruses have been purified using agarose gel. This is also for desalting for copolymerization studies. So this will be end of our uh, um, PPT for your uh, size exclusion chromatography. Uh, so today we will uh, we have a uh, discussion on your uh, um, ion exchange chromatography with size exclusion chromatography. So um, 
this is basically depend on the uh, charge of the different uh, particles present in the sample that is we put anion exchanger and cation exchanger or amphoteric exchanger to exchange and separate the uh, constituent and uh, then we have uh, the size exclusion chromatography uh, size exclusion chromatography is also there so which depends on the particle size uh, so uh, this is also known as the gel formation method chromatography gpc or gel exclusion method when the stationary sorry when the mobile phase is aqueous solvent when it is organic solvent it is gel formation uh, chromatography gc so we will discuss overally the different sections or different parts of both the chromatographic methods and uh, we have now 10 to 15 minutes for any discussion or any doubt you may ask and i will try to answer it and uh, we will have uh, also last 5 to 10 minutes so we will have a, uh, have a flashback of what we have uh, studied till now uh, so over to you students one by one you put your uh, uh, messages or sorry put your questions in the chat box i will try to answer over to you size exclusion chromatography uh, is this uh, applicable to isotope separation so actually uh, i think this will be not uh, uh, so much uh, so much uh, applicable to isotopic methods because uh, carbon 12 and carbon 13 both have the size same but the uh, difference of only one neutron okay that means carbon 12 the size and the carbon 13 size both have the size same with difference in number of neutrons which doesn't uh, affect or have any impact on the size so in isotopic separation uh, the scc will be uh, not uh, not effective okay Anyone? Say, Ojas Dhamapurkar, where are you from? Ojas? Okay, Mumbai. You, uh, you have completed your uh, BSc or MSc in which subject? Okay, okay, okay. Very good. So, any um, any question from anyone? Okay. So, uh, um, uh, tomorrow will be our last class, uh, which will um, uh, we will discuss uh, the sections like your uh, in block five. We will have. Uh, two things that is the membrane separation where semi permeable membranes uh, mostly semi permeable membranes and different uh, um, permeable membranes are used for your uh, separation technique like your reverse osmosis which is very much common in your water purifying systems then nano filtration also this is also a uh, uh, advanced technique for separation of uh, components or impurities from the sample so in this part we will have the membrane separation this is just uh, uh, a modern version of your filtration type okay then 
we have the last unit that is a electromigration that is electrophoresis that is the movement of the uh, uh, ions to their respective electrodes this is known as electrophoresis and how the separation is done with uh, different mechanism with different principles we will have all that in our next class so um, uh, um, uh, up to this point that is uh, up to today we will uh, we have a discussion on uh, different separation techniques the first one is the solvent extraction followed by your liquid chromatography and uh, day before yesterday we will uh, we have discussion on your planar chromatography it includes your uh, uh, paper chromatography as well as thin layer chromatography and yesterday we have discussed gas chromatography as well as high performance liquid chromatography mm -hmm. and today we have discussed ion exchange chromatography with size exclusion chromatography so this chromatography technique is very much uh, uh, used in uh, advanced labs in research labs in industries for separation of pharmaceutical samples or any other research samples to have the uh, different components in its puri purified form and to have the further analysis. And in our research lab, we <coughs> synthesized uh, organic samples and uh, we first uh, do the TLC, thin layer chromatography, whether all the reactants are consumed or not. It will be cross-checked very easy at the easy method that is TLC, thin layer chromatography. We have TLC paper with us that is cellulose coated, uh, cellulose paper. We just put the sample with the capillary uh, tube or micro pipette, pipette and we just put it in, in the chromatogram with the required solvent and with the RF value or uh, the spot um, uh, generated by the component with different colors we predict whether the product is formed or the whole the reactant is reacted or not what is the reaction condition how much time it will take these uh, all these ideas will come from your tlc experiment so after that tlc uh, if the reaction is completed then we go for the column chromatography so the column chromatography is separation of the different components if i uh, found in tlc i have uh, two to three products are uh, prepared or synthesized then we will go for our column chromatography with the silica gel of a silica gel of a of mesh around 60 uh, that is of uh, higher uh, pore size larger pore size then uh, with the help of a column some cotton and silica gels we put the sample uh, by making it a slurry after uh, the addition of the sample as the slurry we put the solvent that hexane then ether this combination are from zero percent onwards one percent two percent five percent this will go on and uh, uh, we will have the different components phase by phase. Okay. Which technique can be used for selective separation of isomers? So selective separation of isomers, we will have uh, uh, the HPLC technique, high performance liquid chromatography that is very much automated technique, advanced version that is a Kamas or Kamag from uh, uh, Japan, I think, uh, Japan or Germany, the instrument is there, automated instrument. HPLC or we have also GCMS, one there, gas chromatography mass spectroscopy. From that only we can uh, easily uh, isolate uh, the um, different isomers of a sample. GCMS will be the best. And uh, if GCMS is not available, uh, you can use HPLC also. Okay. So after separation of the uh, um, after separation of the different components, 
we then go for the um, nmr that is uh, your nmr for your different uh, your what is known as chemical shifts then followed by your different uh, um, biological uh, applications so these things we generally uh, uh, do in our uh, research lab we have also uh, uh, three students are just working on different organic synthesis uh, methods and uh, at this done this uh, chromatography techniques we frequently use to uh, separate the uh, synthesize some more uh, reaction mixture so, okay so at the end uh, uh, i thank you all for your uh, patience hearing and uh, uh, we will have the last class tomorrow and uh, after that we will uh, have uh, dr rajesh what is the difference between filtration and chromatography so chromatography and filtration both are different things chromatography we have two phases that is stationary phase and static phase but in filtration we have only filter paper is there so filtration is just an ordinary separation which may or may not uh, filter all the separating constituent or components effectively or 100% separation will not be made but when i go for chromatographic technique uh, the separation is very much effective and the different components are um are um, separated uh, with precision okay and uh, filtration is not uh, applicable to your gas samples but in your gcm gc technique gas chromatography technique you can separate the volatile or gaseous samples easily with uh, some automation so chromatography is uh, far far more advanced technique uh then your filtration okay uh so is there any question or we may wind up the session for today's okay so then thank you to all and we will have uh, the last class tomorrow and day after tomorrow you will uh, have the spectroscopic technique uh, by the dr rajesh from uh, bhubaneswar and um, we will have uh, after uh, dr rajesh uh, uh, class seven classes we will have the last part of your paper mcs02 at the end of of this uh, year okay so thank you to all uh, god bless you all thank you